The Caligula Effect Overdose has a very unique battle system for a JRPG. It's one part turn-based, one part real-time, while all adhering to a unique time manipulation mechanic called the Imaginary Chain. This can all be somewhat confusing to understand at first, but once you learn its intricacies, you will start to appreciate how complex and tactical the system really is. At the start of every combat encounter, you will be presented with three classifications of actions, Catharsis Effect, which are your attacks, Support, which is buffs and healing, and Action, which are things like restoring your SP, moving your character, and blocking. All pretty standard so far, but let me now introduce you to the imaginary chain in the top right. This timeline shows you each enemy turn that will play out, and allow you to manipulate the timing of your own actions. This also allows you to peek into the future to see what the enemy will do during their turn. To initiate this, simply queue up any action. It doesn't matter what, because you can set up to three actions at a time, and we will not be committing to this first one, we're just getting a feel of the dangers ahead. Note that nothing has yet to actually play out, this is just a preview of what could happen. We notice that one enemy will put up a damage nullifying shield, but we luckily have the perfect skill, Shadow Pierce, to take it down and pop them into the air. Just a reminder, the turn is not yet playing out until we set up to three actions for each of our party members. For our next two actions, we'll queue up two simple damaging shots to juggle that enemy that's in the air. Notice up on the imaginary chain timeline, you can actually see how long a skill will take to start up, when the damage will occur, as well as the ending lag then after. Our first character's actions have been locked into place, and we now shift our focus over to the next on our roster. This character has a great skill for dealing with airborne enemies called Gunslinger. This skill will actually wait to the side on the timeline, and instantly activate as soon as the enemy goes airborne. From being juggled in the air long enough, the enemy will become broken, meaning they will enter a down state for a brief period when they hit the ground. Our next action we queue up will maximize damage to that downed enemy. For our third and final action, we will do some basic raw damage to another enemy I am pre-planning to also pop up into the air with our next character. With him, we will queue up Shining Uppercut to launch this other enemy into the air, primarily to cancel his action that otherwise would have done a decent amount of damage. Next we queue up Damaging Haymaker, but if we wait and watch the remainder of the turn, notice we will get grazed by that third enemy's slash attack towards the end. There are multiple ways around this, we could move out of the way, we could try to cancel their attack, but in this case we're going to use the emergency barrier to guard against it. After we queue it up, notice it will happen immediately after our last action, and we'll completely miss the timing on when we actually get hit. This is where our timeline manipulation on the imaginary chain really comes into play. By pressing Adjust Timing, we can now shift around where we want the barrier to actually play out on the timeline, allowing us to better time that guard. Now before continuing, notice at the top left corner of the screen is the percentage chance of all of this playing out according to the plan shown before you. If just one of these actions miss or get cancelled, it can completely change how the timeline plays out. We now have all three actions for all of our characters set and ready to go, and now we sit back and watch the turn actually play out. Not bad, we completely nullified all damage we would have taken during that turn, and eliminated two enemies. If you notice now, it's our first character's turn again, but our other two characters either still have actions primed, or are still in the ending lag of their attacks. This means the first turn is yet to completely play out, and this character is actually able to act again since his initial attacks had fairly low ending lag on them. Keeping this simple, we will queue up three quick attacks to finish off the remaining enemy. Ooh. 
Now I have one more thing to briefly explain as we jump over to a new battle. Most actions can be cancelled and interrupted, which adhere to these sword and shield indicators on every skill. If this offensive value exceeds the defensive value of the opposing unit's attack, it will interrupt that action, which also applies to your characters as well. In this situation, we want to cancel this attack, but we will find our main character does not have a high enough offensive value skill to actually interrupt this impending attack with a high defense value. If we jump over to our next character, however, he has a heavy hitting 3 value attack, Shining Upper, which should do the job. This allows him to effectively interrupt this attack and avoid anyone taking damage. If you're finding that sometimes you can cancel attacks and sometimes you can't, but couldn't figure out why, it's because of this attack and defensive value system. And with that, this concludes the overall basics of what to expect from the battle system in the Caligula Effect Overdose. If this looks like the kind of thing you might enjoy, the Caligula Effect Overdose releases on March 12th in the US for PlayStation 4, Nintendo Switch, and PC. If you like this style of content that focuses on the interesting details in game mechanics and systems, consider subscribing and checking out my Patreon page which helps to fund the upkeep and growth of my channel along with providing some worthwhile bonuses back to you. As always, this has been Deadite, and thanks for watching Boomstick Gaming.